Well, welcome back to Sunday Best. We are on KTN Home and BTV as well. And we are at the Cascadia Gardens. Uh, it's situated in the Two Rivers Mall. Amazing, amazing facility. Check it out and uh, get one for yourself. It would be great to have such an investment like this one, especially today as we are talking about debt investment. Very, very key. Karibu sana. My name is Anthony Ndema. Of course, I'm uh, with uh, Kevin Shitsukani. He's a financial advisor, but he's also a minister of the gospel, sharing very powerful thoughts about debt, why debt, especially bad debt, is not a good thing. And uh, later on, we'll want to understand how do we get out of debt, all right? It will be very important. Mm -hmm. And um, he's mentioned quite a number of instances, even in the Bible, where debt is not encouraged. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it's biblical. Yes. Quite a number of places True. quoted in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So, um, so here we are, we're talking about some of the practical things that uh, you just need to avoid. Mm -hmm. Of course, your environment, wisdom needs to be at the center of, of it all. Mm -hmm. And um, if you do not have an opportunity to, to manage it and to get it right, then other people will do it for you. They will. Because they are ready. Uh -huh. They want to give you money. In fact, they are more than waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to give you money. Yes, yes. So, so Kevin, mm -hmm. coming back to some of the practical things uh, that we are talking about, yes. um, what are some of those things that, very practically, we just need to avoid? Wow. <laughs> uh, one of the things we need to really avoid is... Uh, going into debt that has no vision mm -hmm. attached to it. Wow. Uh, because you realize that uh, there were several instances in the Bible, uh, like talk of uh, Genesis chapter 26 uh, from verse number 4. In that particular aspect, you realize that uh, there was a time when now the God was telling uh, Isaac, I believe, uh, that he will multiply his seed. Uh -huh. So this brings us now to Genesis again, chapter 8, verse 22, that, uh, you know, life is governed also by another principle called seed mm -hmm. time harvest. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, there is a time when we, ge we get to stop whatever we are doing and then assess yourself. Look around your life and uh, check, check and, you know, come to a place where, you know, there, there are three people you cannot lie in life. It is yourself, God, and the devil. Mm -hmm. You know your financial state and status. Yes. You know your position now. Mm -hmm. You know what you're thinking when money comes. Yes. That is why sometimes you find money giving people even a walking style. <laughs> yeah. Academic uncle sometimes. Yes. Yeah. There yes. are other different versions. But then uh, ask yourself, uh, what are these things I need to avoid mm -hmm. before the money comes, not when the money comes? Uh -huh when it is there. Before you must be ahead of it. Right. So planning is very crucial. Planning is very crucial. Mm. So for you to, uh, I was telling a friend of mine another time, is that uh, there are certain things you need to avoid in such a, uh, as uh, bringing close certain friends because they only can feed from what you have. Uh -huh. And then when you are lacking that particular thing, you realize they have disappeared. Yes. You ask them, where have you been? It's quite a while. Yeah. They have just come back because you won a certain deal. Uh -huh. Or they have realized money is now just, the money has just checked in. Right. So certain things to avoid is avoid uh, friends who are just but uh, parasitical. Mm. People who know how to feed on you, not to feed you. Right. And then avoid, again, uh, things to do with spending without budget. Uh -huh. Yeah. I like that. You need to have budget in everything you do. Everything. Everything. Be, be, <laughs> be one of those people who, are, who can count a coin has just disappeared at that corner. Wow. Then know how to recover it wow. if it has not gone into your future. Mm. All right? Uh, another thing you need to avoid is borrowing to buy assets that are liabilities. 
All right. There are certain assets that you end up having it as a liability. Some of them is uh, buying into a vehicle to please friends. Mm. You just bought uh, a big machine because you want to prove a point in the yes. village I mean, or maybe in the circle of your friends mm -hmm. and then it becomes even expensive to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I've, I got to a place uh, one of these times when I was mm -hmm. going uh, uh, on one of the roads. Uh, I realized there was a V8 that was just stuck on the road. <laughs> and then, mafuta imeisha. Yeah, mafuta imeisha. <laughs> uh, and you can imagine, it was, uh, sorry to say, it was shameful for this guy had sent a motorbike guy mm, to bring uh, Mukebe na yeah, yeah. And then they are pouring it on the road. I am imagining what people were having in their mind as yeah. they were passing along that guy. Exactly. Hey, wengine anazama uza gari nunua mafuta, you know. So uh, we need to uh, go according to the one step at a time. Right. Run with your life, not don't run your life according to someone else's. Uh -huh. Go with your budget, go with your planning, and then go by the will of God, and then run with the season of your life. That's one of the things that really pushes us into uh -huh. debt. Mm -hmm. Because I need to, to belong. Yes. And for me to belong, I need to live in this kind of community. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can't live uko mashambani where yes. I travel for two hours to come. Mm -hmm. I can't live, you know, in this informal uh, area mm. i need to drive this kind of a machine yes that pushes us right in there mm. wow another thing you realize is um, our places of stay mm -hmm. uh, recently i told a certain man uh, they were just newlyweds and uh, all of a sudden some things happened to them of which it's not very normal uh, when people come together, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. and obtains favor, yeah. from the Lord. Right. So favor was to speak all the way, but the, there were certain battles they were going through. So uh, they had uh, defaulted about almost three months rent. Wow. And the place they were living was uh, a bit uh, expensive according oh. to their standard at that time. Right. So uh, they, were they, they were buying, they were actually living in a one bedroom uh, house. They were paying about 65,000. Mm -hmm. And I told them, do you know with the same money, you can pay for a three bedroom house somewhere else. Right. If not, then can you change a bit, even if you can give it for two months. Now, this is a strategy I'm helping them to come out of debt. Right. Yeah. So I told them, leave where you're living, where you're paying 65,000 and move to a house you can pay even 30,000. Right. Such that between 30 and 65, you have 35,000, you can begin now to accumulate this money mm. and pay where you are defaulting and then come back to your original status, mm. then you can continue to live that particular life. Right. So sometimes we go into living life that is expensive to uh, remind our people in the village or maybe friends around us, the circle of friends, that I'm doing good and right. you know your, yourself, you are not living your life. Right. You are struggling in this area. Beyond your means. Beyond your means. Beyond. So living beyond your means, you live a borrowed life. Now you're not even borrowing money, you are borrowing life. Wow. It's a and then life. you end up being a slave to somebody. Mm. Yeah. And then they say the wisdom of a poor man is despised. Mm -hmm. Even if this man saved a nation. Yes. The Bible says he was <laughs> forgotten. Wow. Yeah. That's he was forgotten. Why? Because this guy is not having a voice. Mm. There is a voice that comes your way when money is in your hand. True. Yeah. Very true. That is why you realize a rich man, uh, there is a very practical example I got um, in a certain uh, friend's life. The wife, they were both traveling up country and uh, on one of the festivities. And then he is the one who was supporting the family. They are a family of four. And then this gentleman uh, go to up country and then uh, the rest of the family are gathered together. It's a family gathering and then get together and all that stuff. And then the rest of the guys, their wives who are being given assignment to do. Mm -hmm. But the wife of this gentleman is told, <laughs> sit in the sitting room. Yes. Let's have story. Let's talk. How have you been? Mm. Why do you think that is happening? It's because this guy is commanding the financial freedom of the family. Wow. So there is no point for the wife to be given another assignment as slavery, wow. for lack of a better word. Yeah. So it means 
there is a certain authority you receive mm. when you have your financial literacy and not just literacy but practicality right on in there mm -hmm. and of course debt is one of those things that will snatch away exactly that privilege yes. of having financial freedom mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, compound interest compound interest even as we think about debt vis-a-vis uh -huh. -vis debt uh -huh. yes about compound interest i would say uh Warren Buffett one time mentioned something and he said he who understands uh, the principle of compound interest lives a life that is on top of others. Mm -hmm. In terms of when you get into compound interest aspect, you realize that the understanding of your financial uh, literacy brings you to a place of knowing that this is the amount I need to put here for this period of time, and then after this, there is a transfer I need to do. Uh -huh. Every time money comes your way, it has to be transferred into something else. That's true. If not, then it needs to be translated into another version of itself. Okay. Money is not papers. <laughs> money. Uh there is something behind the papers that yes. is the money right because according to now compound interest aspect there is always an interest you are searching to get mm. out of the opportunity you got with this money right and then get to a place of uh, before I explain I, I know you want to me to explain the compound index interest part yes. uh, in fact maybe that is our climax of the moment okay this is what you need to do with the compound interest, always find opportunities that can grow your financial uh, stability. Mm -hmm. Financial stability then brings you to a place of knowing that, like, we are in this uh, blessed facility. Yes. Begin to dream big and now know how and when can I own such a kind of a thing. Uh -huh. Now, you began the journey of compound interest. How? It's because now you are searching in the womb of time. Mm. Yeah, getting and grabbing and grasping every privilege others are taking as trash or postponement. Okay. All right. Can I explain that? Right. As we were beginning, I was talking about uh, the seed time harvest uh, principle. Yeah. In fact, that is where compound interest began. <clears throat> this is how it goes. When you feel what you have is not enough, then it doesn't belong to you. When you feel what you have is not enough, both for you and to sustain yours, mm. then it is not for you. You have then to give it another voice. All right. This voice is called the seed of the time. Okay. So that it matures into a harvest. All right. Yeah. Now. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3, I believe, it says, uh, cast your bread in many waters and after many days you've got to have it. Right. Now, this is your bread. At the same time, is your seed. Uh -huh. It is in your hand. Now, as it is in your hand, you are the one to determine which ground am I sowing it in. Right. If not the ground, which basket am I keeping it in? If not the basket, then which vision am I venturing in? Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. What you are doing is you are searching for opportunities to ensure what you have that was not enough is maturing into what you wanted to have. Money has to get you to a place you don't need it, but you want it. Eish, those are very heavy things. Just say that again. <laughs> Money has to get to a place where you don't need it, okay. but you want it. The time you begin to give it that definition and approach, that is the time now money begins to pursue you. And then you find before you know it, you don't need to prayer points to get out of uh, debt. <laughs> uh -huh. Sometimes it is a preconceived notion that is not correct where we stage a warfare prayer session mm -hmm. to pray against the spirit of debt. Yes. It is good, yes, I'm... Uh, I believe God, I yeah. speak in tongues, if, yeah. or I try it for two minutes. Yeah. Then <laughs> in that kind of a scenario, yeah. then you begin now to walk the journey of freedom, mm. whereby now you are defining now compound interest for yourself. I'll be finishing with a very strong point about compound interest yeah. that will now culminate the whole thing about now understanding the seed time harvest. Right. And then at that particular point, get to know what is my seed of the time. There is no one who is poor 
that cannot get out of poverty. Wow. And then there is no one who is too broke that cannot have what to give. There is a certain giving you do that you walk majestically and the demons of poverty get out of you and leave you forever. Mm -hmm. The reason why people get into debt is not because they were poor. All right. Sometimes it is because they have big vision without a strategy to meet that particular goal. Mm -hmm. And then number two, it is because they have a poverty mentality originally. As well. And then number three is because of also foundation that was not redefined. Mm -hmm. So this foundation now has affected them. Now they need to know, biblically, to know how can I break the cycle. Right. Because there is a certain, of course, we come from particular places that we find there was a struggle in the family. There is how you find, hey, the way I went to school, it is God. Yeah. But then you don't need to live with that. Someone was saying you can go to uh, the U.S. from uh, one of the villages in the country and then, or one of the slums. But then you, it is now upon you to make that priority to declare, mm. I am waging war against the village I came from right. that has entered my mind. Uh -huh. It is one thing to walk out of a slum, but it's another thing for slum to walk out of you. <laughs> All right? Yes. That is the time you begin now to walk into financial freedom that now is able to help you com de de define now compound interest for your life. All right. Exactly. Wow, amazing. Talking about um, um, coming out of uh, debt, yes, which is ideally mm -hmm. getting into financial freedom. Mm -hmm. When you have started borrowing, mm -hmm. and you mentioned about good debt and mm -hmm. bad debt, mm -hmm. how far can you go with the borrowing? How wow. how far do you get to? How do you then realize that I need to stop? Mm -hmm. This is not healthy for me. Or I need to keep going because it's multiplying for me more. Uh -huh. Where do you draw the line? Uh, the red line is actually the time when you realize you have really borrowed and now you can hide from people. <laughs> you're you? in buyer. You, you've gotten to a point <laughs> where now... You no longer pick calls. Wow. Now you find uh, uh, the financial institutions, they are also on your case. Mm. Uh, not only financial institutions, but we have also friends. Uh, you have now even crossed lines with friends. Uh, you no longer listen to so and so. Now you have, you, it, you know, there is a level of poverty that brings people into arrogance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But then someone said, uh, there is no better place for a poor man. Uh, let me call it that way so that I can also provoke something inside of us so that we hate poverty forever yes. and we hate debt, right? So this is what he said. He said, there is no better place for a poor man apart from the level of humility. Wow. There is how poverty can dwindle your hands until you are only humble. Right. right? So the real humility of life of a person is check this person when now they are commanding uh, seven digits in, in dollars you know yes. this person if you find them still humbling enough <laughs> into then maybe that's humility yeah, that's real humility yes but then if you find maybe someone who is less fortunate in mm. that regard and then they are very humble then yeah. it is just a matter of time <laughs> All that's right. poverty. <laughs> that's poverty talking. Yes, right. So the best place poverty can place a man is in the level of humility for man, not for God. Right. Wow. And then we begin now to pursue things that we fall in for anything. Uh -huh. So you don't have your personal self to declare that this is what I want and I stand for my truth. Come on. All right. So there is a level of debt, person in debt has no voice of their own mm. and then they have no paradigm of their own to enjoy their paradise in terms of uh let, let, let me let me bring it this way can i go deeper go deep go <laughs> go deeper come on look at this the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse number 19 uh, that uh, wine makes merry yes but money answers all oh things. <laughs> chapter 19 of uh, uh, Matthew, chap verse 26, he says, uh, with God, there is nothing impossible with God, but mm. with men, all things are impossible. Right. 
So it means when we bring all these two uh, verses into uh, one equilibrium, you realize that whoever has money is thinking in the mindset of rightful thinking of God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have a voice to declare authority. They become a king in their domain. When you have finance, you can even roll romance. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Wow. Someone All said right. one time that there is no romance without finance. Yeah. I'll confirm that. <laughs> uh, I've talked to relationships uh, by the grace of God. Yeah. I normally help young people to know how to carry themselves around in terms of relationship, love, mm -hmm. and marriage and stuff. So when I was talking to them, I realized many of the breakups was not as an aspect of infidelity. And I'm not encouraging that as well, you know. <laughs> right. It was as a result of a promise that was tied to finances that was broken to be attained. Mm -hmm. And then number two, it was because this money that was being expected was spent in something else. Now, it has broken even this marriage. Look at this. Most of the times, marriages fight Mm. And there is an aspect of submission right. and war about knowing who is who in this house. It is because there is wealth and finances that have not oh. been honored in that office. That's true. In marriage, there is also what you call the office of finance. Mm. Now, in this office, whoever works in it and understands how to uh, secure Ma the rights of others. Right. That is the person who is able to define what is really mar marriage. Mm. Because marriage is not governed by love. Wow, That's, that sounds very controversial. Uh -huh. <laughs> People, most of the times, don't come together because they loved each other. Okay. Wow. <laughs> People come together because they are coming to fulfill a certain purpose in God. And part of the privileges they enjoy is love, okay. intimacy, uh -huh. finances, right. favor, mm. name them, all right? So that is why then we need to come to a place of saying, how do I now draw the red line, uh -huh. all right? The red line is how, check yourself, how much is your freedom? Mm -hmm. If then you feel it is your, you are becoming now a squatter in your own land, it is too far now. That's right. Then you need to begin to find a way. Mm -hmm. How can I avoid this? And number two, how can I walk out of this? Because right. you are already in a ditch in that time. That's true. Exactly. You know what? Every time you keep speaking, you're relating poverty and debt. Uh -huh. So clearly debt pushes, pushes you into poverty. Mm -hmm. We need to finish. Oh, wow. And I, I just want you to... Finish on that aspect of compound interest. Uh -huh. It's very, very important. Mm. But before that, yes, yes. Philippians 4.19, mm -hmm. I shall supply mm. all your needs yes. according to my riches and glory by Christ mm. Jesus. Does debt then uh, deny you an opportunity mm. to fully depend on God for provision? This is a span I'm throwing. Wow. D do you, sometimes does borrowing... Is it an easy way out mm -hmm. for you not to engage you know, that faith gear to trust in God for what you desire? <laughs> Tricky question, eh? <laughs> I, I, I think it's also, okay, it is uh, diversified. Eh? Yeah. I would say um, you can give it an approach uh, like uh, the time in the Bible when uh, the Elisha was telling this lady to borrow jars yes. so that they can feel the little oil they had. Uh -huh. Uh, that is one aspect. Right. That is why you, when you are taking this borrowing mm -hmm. into something that is creative and profitable, then it means you need to borrow it. That's right. That's why we said it begins with now for you to walk out of a certain debt, mm -hmm. there are times you need to borrow another debt. Right. So that you multiply what you have to pay all of them. Okay. All right. And that's allowed. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. allowed. Okay. Yeah, but then there is this borrowing that you are borrowing now to um, make or please people around your life, mm. and then it ends you up into investing things or to things that don't mean to life. Ah. 
So when you are borrowing into buying for things that don't mean to life, mm. that is the time you have what you call the harvest of debt. Wow, the harvest. <laughs> hey, hey, that's so powerful. The harvest of debt. Because you've taken money mm -hmm. and you just buy things. Yes. And you're harvesting. Mm -hmm. we, we look at you, you have a very nice car. Yes. You're living in a you are living place. a posh life, you know. <laughs> but all that <laughs> is the harvest of debt. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, it's called uh, Robert Einstein's. He was mm -hmm. talking about uh, also compound interest. Mm -hmm. He says uh, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Is the eighth wonder of the world. And whoever understands it mm -hmm. earns from it. Uh -huh. And whoever ignores or does not understand it suffers and pays for it. Right. That is why we come in and tell you uh, it is never too late to start finding what to invest on mm -hmm. so that you will multiply what you have. Right. As we said one time, is that whatever you have and you save it, you will have it or you will draw down the value of it. But whatever you have and you invest it, you multiply whatever you have and you have abundance of it. Mm -hmm. That's the time now we come to Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply to your needs according to riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Yes. Now, this divine supply comes when now the one being supplied to has a place he's going mm -hmm. and he's standing at a, a particular angle of life. Right. Okay? But when you are waiting to be supplied so that you can confirm a certain thing that I wanted to punish so and so mm -hmm. by this provision. Uh -huh. Now, you have no vision for it. It is True. pride. True. And provision comes after you have established a vision. Uh -huh. That is why it is called pro. Vision. vision. Wow. So provision follows a vision that is now being supplied by God. Mm. And then if you are then pursuing this thing to prove pride before uh, maybe the society, then it ends you up into harvesting what is not now wealth, right. but you harvest debt. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. That is why we, are, we were going to the aspect of now uh, Robert Einstein's yes. talking about compound interest and he said, whoever understands this aspect, right. gets to a place of earning out of it instead of paying for it. Mm. So you have to always find means that will make you earn, not pay. Find means that will make you earn, yes. not pay. Not pay. Wow. Why? Because you need to create as many tributaries yes. that you will flow your wisdom in mm. and men pay for it. Wow. There is an aspect of you that when it comes out, you are, not no, you are no longer pursuing money. Right. It is money now pursuing you. Another thing is this. Look at it this way. Uh, scientifically, they say um, every human being should sleep for at least maybe between seven, seven to eight, eight hours. Yes. Now, using this compound interest uh, aspect is get to a place, what advantage are you gaining from mm. this sleep of the night? when others are sleeping and snoring, for lack of a better word, how much are you earning from that sleep? <laughs> that is I why like that. you need to find another dimension of yourself mm -hmm. that you have invested in, such that even if you go to bed, you're still working. Uh -huh. Because if you sleep and you wake up late, there is someone who understands the aspect of compound interest that is earning from your sleep. <laughs> All right. So then come to a place oh, of standing my. this chance and mm. say, as I'm going to bed and resting, mm. with all these hours I'm d in deep sleep, yes. am I earning at least, even if it is $10 of it, just have a common thinking of it. Right. What is it that is an idea that I can venture in mm. so that I recover my eight hours of waste. Someone was saying, uh, mm. if, you sleep, if you are around 60 years and above old, you will realize if you go by this principle of sleeping for at least eight hours, you are about 25 years old yes. in sleep. <laughs> so your wow. age is no longer 60. That's you true. have lived a life of 45 at 60 or uh, at 70 or so. Right, right. All right. So calculate it this way to finish with. The age you are now, is it a reality of life? Mm. 
mm. in terms of acquisition of wealth. Wow. Why? Because wealth is very paramount in the time we are living in, that we don't need to condone the life of debt because we need to finance the kingdom. Mm. Revival is at hand That's true. and we need to run the race. That's if right. we don't, that is why you find the devil is winning even uh, some of our blessed uh, musicians. Mm. They are going to the other side because they want quick wealth. Right. But then we can still redefine this thing. Come on. Mm -hmm. Wow. You've said so many powerful things. Uh -huh. What I've gotten is wealth, I mean, debt and poverty, they play in the same league. Yes. So don't go in there. Uh -huh. Albert Einstein's principle. Mm -hmm. I love it. Wow. And of course, as we think about everything else, which basket are you putting mm -hmm. your treasures in? Wow. wow. Which basket? Mm -hmm. Are you investing? Mm -hmm. Are you taking it away? Are you feeding from mm -hmm. what you have? Mm -hmm. Or are you, you know, building it? I think uh, just to make it a quick one, um, every time you have uh, money coming into your pool, divide it into three things. Number one, give it a 50% uh, aspect. And then talk of 30% uh, aspect. And then talk of 20% aspect. All right. Right? So on 50%, dwell time on it in terms of feeding your needs. Okay. Okay? Take the 30%, spend and dwell time on dividing it this way. 20 and then 10. Now we are remaining with another 20 on the other end. That's right. All right? Now, this 20, use it on what you call wants. Mm -hmm. There are things you can do without, but mm -hmm. if you have to, then you still have a pool to pull from. Right. But the day you use uh, money for needs in wants, you end up in debt. Ah, That's the equation. Okay. And then this 10 is the preliminaries and uh, miscellaneous. Okay. All right? And then come to 20. Yes, the last one. This other 20, last one is number one is honor to God, mm -hmm. tithe. All right. Then in it, sometimes I normally say this other 20 that you don't need for miscellaneous and uh, for prelim preliminaries, mm -hmm. take it to this other side. All right. Then call it now 30. Uh -huh. You have now tithe on it, 10% of your life, uh, yeah. your income, and then you have the remaining 20%. This 20% dwell much on it, investing into your future. Uh -huh. We are good at tithing to the work of God or in the kingdom of God, but we are not good at tithing into our future. Wow. You have said it so well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Kevin, for sharing this very powerful thoughts about debt. Mm -hmm. I hope you've been able to get something, and I hope um, that you will invest in your future. The, the more you invest in your future, the lesser you get out of debt. Remember what you feed grows, what you starve dies. So starve what you need to starve. All right, we're at the Cascadia um, Apartments at the Two Rivers Mall. Check it out. Simple, beautiful. you love it. Till next Sunday, Asante Sana. God bless you. And let's aim to live a debt-free life. God bless you. <laughs>